Welcome to We Build. We don't just build buildings, we build communities. Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Build, the official podcast of H.J. Russell & Company. I'm Paul Bryant. I'm Lenoya Murphy. And we are your hosts for today, and we have a wonderful show planned, Lenoya. Oh, yeah. Man, you know, we've been talking about family, mm -hmm. legacy, and all of that. Yeah. And our guest today is Alan Houston, mm. former NBA All-Star, Tennessee great, matter of fact, all-time leading scorer in Tennessee's wow. history. But there's so much more depth to him. I just can't wait to talk to him. You're yeah. going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot. Stay tuned. Our guest today is Allen Houston with the New York Knicks. He wasn't the guy who just dad loaned him a few million dollars to get started. He's an entrepreneur's entrepreneur, man. So anybody who wanted to have their own, he was that guy who gave us hope that it could be done. Mr. Russell was critical for Atlanta at the time that we needed that. He was famous for unlocking the unusual potential in people. There are a number of individuals around the country who can be considered a part of the H.J. Russell University. <laughs> he could see and visualize opportunities where others couldn't, and he would just dare to step into the space. Everything in the world he was born into was designed to be sure he did not succeed. And Herman, in his lifetime, overcame all of that. Think of it, he's been on the lowest rank you can think of of being a shoeshine guy, to you know being on some of the most powerful boards in town. Atlanta without an H.J., I don't know what that looks like. I don't think I want to know what that looks like. I was determined to improve their life and my life. And in many time I said, hell with segregation. I'm going to be what I want to be. Welcome back to We Build with Paul Bryant. And I'm Lenoya Murphy. Lenoya, you know, he, one of the beautiful things about this podcast is mm -hmm. I get a chance to just, you know, interview some just good old friends and mm -hmm. just introduce them to you, introduce them to the audience and just find out more about their life. Yeah. And Alan Houston is one of those guys, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Alan, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they remember you, you know, that shot, putting the Knicks into the playoffs, you know, they remember that shot. Tell us what's happening with you now. Well, first, as we just, um, reference um, my wife and I just celebrated 25 yeah. amazing years Ooh, um, we have seven beautiful children from 22 to 9 wow. five girls two boys so the people who ask me that question what are you doing now I mean I have to start there um, mm -hmm. because it is when I think about this podcast being here today which I'm so honored to be just being able to meet Michael and see some of the legacy legacy right? right so it is about that for me it's about um taking everything that i've learned from my upbringing my mm -hmm. parents uh, coaches that i've coached uh, i mean played for mm -hmm. players that i've been able to learn from and just all these experience and think about where does it land and where does it stand and and where can my children glean from it and mm -hmm. and like michael just gave me a piece of advice how can my kids leverage it Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm working for the Knicks in player and leadership development. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is interesting because we, when we, we talk on the phone, he'll call me at eight o'clock in the morning. I'll call him at eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll only really have about five minutes, but we spend about 20. Uh -huh. um, cool. and, and just having those refreshing reminders of what life is really all about, mm -hmm. what's, what's driving us every day, the values that drive our behavior that that keep us purposeful in life mm -hmm. i didn't just enjoy sharing that and i do it through working with the knicks i do it through um an organization that i started so it's a for-profit and non-for-profit mm -hmm. uh, we do leadership development entrepreneurship uh we what have, are those organizations yeah. so uh the organization is called fizzle 
And FIZZLE is an acronym for okay. Faith, Integrity, Sacrifice, Leadership, and Legacy. Okay. And when we talk about this collaboration, I'm going to call it between H.J. Russell, it is about fundamentals of life. It's about fundamentals of winning. It's about fundamentals of purpose. Um, and uh, we call those the fundamentals of life. And I got them from um, this is my experience playing for my father and learning principles from my mother mm -hmm. and the, the foundation that they, the soil that they put into our family. Mm. Um, and so you know, I, I share that all of us have a, a talent, a gift, an offering, um, but underneath that talent has to be a soil that's cultivated, right? Mm -hmm. That's nurtured that will allow that talent to flourish and grow to its best. And um, a lot of athletes, you know, that I get a chance to speak with, they're uncertain about what their future is going to be. Just like any young student or performer in life or executive, you don't know where it's going to land. I'm sure Michael and his dad, when they were young, didn't know that they were going, this is going to be where they were. They were just doing what they were doing at that time. But they had values and principles that sat underneath, right, the fundamentals that gave it a chance. Um, so that's what fizzle is for me, right? It's, it's a way to do that, but still make money and give back. You know, what's so interesting is I've watched you live what mm -hmm. you're, I've watched you live fizzle. Yeah. We met the year that you were transitioning out of the yes. league. Mm -hmm. And so your thing, you were getting in shape because you were giving it, you know, yeah. you were giving it that last shot. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, so that's the year you stopped, but yeah. you still had the goods, you know, and, and so, but that mindset, okay, what, yeah. where am I really going to focus now? What's yeah. the next step for me? And so as we've talked over the years, I've watched you transition from athlete to entrepreneur mm. to, you know, book writer, visionary, mm. you know, with now with your own concept. It, it, it's mm. pretty amazing, Alan. And, you know, I'm going to say this to, you know, my, my co-host, Lenoya, because mm. I wanted to know that. You're really one of those athletes that, in my opinion, is worthy of the respect and adulation that young kids give to athletes. I mean, the way that you lived your life, the way you carried your career, you know, it's, it's exemplary. You know, mm. I wouldn't mind my children saying, hey, I want to be like this guy. Mm. You know, it's, it's more than just hooping and making the salary. It's, mm. you know, seven children, yeah. one wife, 25 years. Yeah. You know. I need some advice. You need some well, advice from my girls. Have, actually, I have a question <laughs> okay. um, based on, you know, what you were sharing with us. And that yeah. is, how were you able to establish your priorities? Mm. Because that's what mm. keeps ringing yeah. to me yeah. based on what you're saying. I heard Michael early talk about being intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about fundamentals and values um, is they, they, they're dictated by what you prioritize. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you really invest? That's what value is, what you mm -hmm. invest in, right? So it, again, it started from these five values. So let's talk about faith. You talked about a time when I was uncertain about my transition. Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember when I knew that I was going to have to shut it down. And I, and I, and I, talk, I went to the coach and the management, and I knew it was over, but I said, just give me a week. Okay. And I said, give me a week. And I prayed that week. And I said, God, I know that this is what's going to happen, but you need to give me kind of a peace and a strength <clears throat> to know how to navigate this right now. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do that, when I found myself Sub subscribing to the highest source and being, you start to get a little bit of direction. Here's where you need to start. Here's what comes second. Here's yeah. So now, when I start my day, you know, I, I just start off with that. Then, okay. then next comes family. I, tell, I challenge a lot of people, all right, just write, like literally write that down. What are you, what do you value? Write it down. And most people will say family, mm -hmm. you know, health, you know, God or the relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if that's what you're writing, your top three things you're writing, well, how much time are you spending, you know, with those priorities, right? 
So I think that's kind of how I do it. Like even I'm traveling, you know, I learned over the years, you know, technology helps, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> I can get up in the morning and if we're in the morning and my kids are going to school and we get together for five minutes, do a little prayer, a little devotional or something, then what's preventing me to do that when I'm on the road? Nothing, mm. right? That's so right. it's really about how you would make those things intentional, um, things that you can do anywhere and make them part of your habitual lifestyle mm. and work from there. And I think that people think that because I have to do this tangible thing that's gonna make me money, that's not what you have to do first, mm. right? That's gonna, that's gonna be the thing that helps you move in a certain direction, but what's first should be first, and the rest will take care of itself. Mm. Okay, so okay. you went through the, the, the F and the I. What, yeah. what, equate the rest of fizzle to your life. Yeah, so it's, it's like a chain, right? When you, when you have a belief system, that belief system will determine how you operate, your boundaries, your, your behavior, your, your, your principles, your law. That's where integrity comes in, is what are you, how are you governing yourself, right? Mm -hmm. In order to make that operate properly, you have to make some sacrifices, right? You have to give up something. You have to put some things in place. Uh, so sacrifice is the third principle because no one can win, right, without making sacrifices. You, can't, you ask a player or a team, when you won, what was the hardest thing? I had to give up a lot, I had to do this. I had to give up. My role might have been I give something to someone else so they could be successful, mm -hmm. right? It's not about me. So you have to make sacrifices to advance and to move, and to move forward. Um, you and know, I, I was thinking about when Michael was doing his interview and he was talking about when he was a little kid and yeah. his yeah. father had him with the rake and the shovel. I'm I, in my mind, I was thinking yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. You know, that, that his dad sacrificed, because I'm sure the kids were complaining, Dad, I don't want to work. I want to play with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to do this. And so he sacrificed that probably great relationship with his children right then at that right. moment to teach them those values mm -hmm. that would make them better people. Yeah, I mean, and, and when you're making those sacrifices, sacrifice and selflessness in itself is one of the biggest components of leadership, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Think about servant leadership. Absolutely. Think about being a model. Leadership comes first from thinking, do I have the capacity to give something to you? If, mm -hmm. I, don't, if I can't give to you something that I don't have, yeah. a, get, don't have. And so the way you build capacity in yourself is you have to give first. And, and, and yield to something uh, bigger than yourself first. And I think that's what sacrifice is, which takes us into, you know, to, to, to a role of, of, of leadership. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And there's two more L's, right? <clears throat> leadership um, is, you know, growing up in Louisville, Kentucky, my mother likes to tell the story of two people grew up two houses down, two houses apart, on the west end of, of Louisville and Grand Avenue, mm -hmm. both have gold medals. One is here and <laughs> one is Muhammad Ali. Oh. And so when I hear that story and then I go into watching my father's and my mother's role, not just in their career path, but as parents, as community leaders, mm -hmm. it, it, leadership has been something that was just kind of like, I don't know if the right term is uh, we've been thrust into, but you just, you walk into it. And a lot of athletes walk into leadership just because they're talented, right? right. You're the best, right. you're the most talented, you know, and it doesn't have to be an athlete. It could be an, an, Actor, a performer in yeah. anything you yeah. do. So now you're thrust in this role of leadership because mm -hmm. of your talent, your gift, but are you really, do understand the magnitude, right? Everything that that means and how to maximize it. And so leadership has to be trained, I think. You know, people talk about he's a natural or she's a natural. What's that even mean? Well, I'm gonna take a little bit of leadership right now and just in this segment because mm -hmm. I can see our producer waving his <laughs> hands there, Alan. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about leadership mm -hmm. and we're gonna get to that last L. People, yeah. you're listening to the podcast We Build. We'll be right back. Just be good.
So we've had a day of celebration and it's been amazing. We are launching our We Build campaign as we celebrate our 60th year of incorporation. We build culture, amazement. We build smiles. So you see, it's not about the structure, but it's about the feeling of the people that will experience our structures. Welcome back, everyone. I am Lenoya Murphy. And I'm Paul Bryant. And we are joined by Alan Houston on We Build, the podcast, the official podcast of H.J. Russell and Company. So, Alan, you were talking about the L's. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended the last leadership. segment with leadership. Yeah. So, usually when I say fizzle, one of my goals, right, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. when people say the word fizzle, right, mm -hmm. they think about fizzle out. But mm -hmm. I want to. I want the word to, to the connotation to be more fizzle in. You right? put a little sizzle in the fizzle. <laughs> there you go, right? Sizzle. Keep the sizzle. Build it. <laughs> and so the, the the last two, there's two L's, mm -hmm. right? There's a there's a leadership and then there's a legacy because mm -hmm. once you have adopted these first three principles, it it really does give you kind of some qualification some attributes for leadership. Mm -hmm. And once you have identified with leadership and understand it, pursue it, because it's never something you arrive, never somewhere you really fully arrive, mm -hmm. um, you, I think you understand legacy. Because legacy is, legacy we tell all of our young leaders is not just about what you have left behind, mm -hmm. that's part of it, but it's what are you building? We build legacy. Right, we're, we're creating legacy. Um, and what I like to share about legacy is if there's an impression that you're, all, that you're leaving on somebody the first time you meet them or interact with them. I was learning this from my father. Is he'd always say, you never get a second chance to leave your first impression. Right. And that always stuck with me because, um, you know, when you're an athlete, you meet someone and they see you, they're like, whoa, you know, and and the impression that you leave at that moment is going to stick, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is it going to be, right? Is it going to be, man, you know, he was a jerk or blah, blah, blah. But what this allows us to do is go even deeper, right? Help someone be a better person to live better, to perform their life better. And so being able to share that, so, so to use your platform and use that moment where you can engage with someone and then give them and pour something into them that they can help them live better is what it's all about and give them tools right, right. um we need tools we just don't you know we don't need just to feel good we need like okay tell me how to do this mm -hmm. give give me the strategy and so legacy is it, it's it's a lot it's taking on something that i that was passed on to me this yeah. is this is legacy this business is legacy you know I, i've always wanted to not just help people get better, but help them find a path where they can give past their own legacy, not just uh, learning and personality, but financially, mm -hmm. right? And that's what's so, I really appreciate this moment, you know, being able to sit and talk with Michael, being here with, because it, when you talk about legacy, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, a pit, this is the epitome. Well, there's so much in common that you have, I mean, yeah. You know, Michael has taken right. over a business that his grandfather started uh, and that his father took, you know, mm -hmm. to the epitome yeah. of, of success. And, and now he's continuing that. And you, you played for your father at, you know, yeah. University of Tennessee. Yeah. And, and I met you during your father and son basketball camp. Father yeah. knows best yeah. basketball camp. Yeah. And I'll have to be honest, you know, as I was there with my eight-year-old son. Mm -hmm. I, I admired the Can't relationship. Eight. Eight. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of, of Big Way, you, yeah. and little Al, you know, just looking at, you know, those yeah. three generations of men. I mean, good yeah. men, man. I, you know, let's call it straight, yeah. Al. You're a good yeah. brother. You, you're attractive. You played in the league. I mean, you, uh, I'm sure you've had plenty of opportunities to, you know, <clears throat> So do some things that, you know, yeah. don't uh, tear just down line up with fizzle. <clears throat> yeah. and, and, but yeah. you chose mm -hmm. to live that life, man, and, and you want to pass that on. 
And that, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think about that day, too, is we saw PC, PJ, and now look at PJ. Look at your son. And we talk about this a lot, how, you know, he's poured into his son, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it, it goes back to that word being intentional. Um, you really do have to think about who you want to become. And it's, it's, a, it's a challenging exercise, you know, especially when you're younger, mm -hmm. right. uh, which is why it's, it's fulfilling to do this because when you're young, you're not, it's hard to think about that. I'm not thinking about yeah, what I'm gonna do when I'm a dad <laughs> or you know, a company, but you have to, you know, you right. have to. So, so what's it like? I want to know, Lenore. I really want to know. What's it like being, you know, the dad of seven kids, man? Oh, what, yeah. What is that? You can have a wow. Houston's reality show or something. Yeah. Oh, that's well, a good idea. Well, first of all, it's, it starts with my wife. You know, she, she um, can't say enough about mm -hmm. who she is. Right. She, she, she asked me, we had uh, dinner the other night, mm -hmm. and she said, She's asked this before, but it felt more like, how do I, I had to really dodge, not, not dodge, but I had to like think about how I answered this. Okay. <laughs> but now it's like, okay, we've been married 25 years. We ain't going nowhere. Like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. So she's like, you could have had, you could have had anybody. You could have had whatever. Why? why? Oh. What was it? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I won't use the word I use, but I was like, you ain't care. You didn't care about yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You, you mean, you were you. Mm -hmm. You weren't trying to impress people or measure up to this girl over here or, and, and I said, after I said it, what I was really saying is you valued yourself. Mm -hmm. right. That was so attractive, it was yeah. so inviting, engaging. I've, obviously, she was beautiful, mm -hmm. right? right? Share with us a story she, about when you <laughs> met her. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Share with us a story about when you met her. Well, we met when I first got, so I was drafted by the Detroit Pistons. Mm -hmm. And when I first got to Detroit, you know, you're getting settled. Mm -hmm. you, you're trying to understand the landscape. And I had uh, a friend, uh, a mutual friend of our parents mm -hmm. came and knocked on the door and said, hey, we have some friends of ours who have basically family and children your age. I mean, I'm 22, you know. And I'm like, first of all, I was like, man, I kind of want to meet my own, you know, people uh, like, right. you know, in my mind, I was like, little like project that. then. Mm -hmm. So New Year's Day comes, mm -hmm. and I was the first time I've been just sitting in, alone on New Year's. I'm like, what am I even thinking about? Like, so I called my mom, I'm like, Ma, you think I can go by those people's house? Oh, yeah. Man, I was there by myself, just kind of meeting people, and which was so unlike me, mm -hmm. right, to just invite myself and not know anybody. Hmm. She, man, she walked in with her roommate, and I'm like, that's who they were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> if you could have seen a picture of my insides, I was beating myself up. I was like punching my, you know. So how long have you been there before? The, the well, we, we didn't really talk much. You know, we didn't have this, we didn't get to snap. You know, we didn't, yeah. you know, we didn't have that. So uh, it was really kind of awkward, right? So we talked for a second, five minutes. She was in and out. She was a senior at Michigan State. Okay. So I called my mom after. I'm like, Mom, I, need, I gotta find out how to get back in touch with that, with that girl. You know, she was a senior at Michigan State, and I'm like, well. So we became friends. You know, we just talk, and I encourage a lot of people. Like, how do you how do you determine a good friendship with the opposite sex now? Mm. You know what I mean? How do you how do you go into that level where we can be friends and respect each other and, yeah. and pull for each other's success before we get to that point, mm -hmm. right? And it's tough, but it's that's what we that's what we ended up doing. And uh, but I knew, like I knew way earlier. I knew, I just knew. You know, I've been around, you know, a lot of women. And I've been around people and just seen, you know, you just vibe with people. Yeah, and you can right. see their motives, right? Mm -hmm. And you you're always guarded anyway. Mm -hmm. So women have to be guarded, and and I was guarded because you know you have people coming for different things. So I just knew and she, it was just her character. Yeah. She was fizzle before I even thought about fizzle. Oh, yeah. wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the fact that now we talk about fizzle to our children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we'll say, is that true integrity? Our middle daughter's name is Truth. Mm -hmm. My son gave her that name, like Truth. 
And, and I, you know, we talk now like she's 11. She's like, you know, that's an honor to have that name, but you don't have to be honest a lot. <laughs> you know, and so we do hold ourselves. We know we're, we're going to fall. You know, we're imperfect beings. And, um, but I think the journey is great because you, you're in that house, man, and there's always something happening. Mm-hmm. It's all, oh, man. It's I just, bet it is. You got a 16, you got a 17 year old trying to figure out how she's going to get. And then a lot of the time it's like, <laughs> well, I don't even, how do you even think that way? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really trying to understand how they, how they thinking. So wait a minute. So there's 22. 22. She's, she graduated from NYU. Okay. Um, my son is, is playing football at Brown. He's a wide receiver at Brown. Okay. Uh, I have a junior in high school. Then we have an eighth grader daughter. Uh, seventh grade daughter, fifth grade daughter, and fourth grade son. Ooh. So there's um, that. So like, literally, when I think about legacy now, I really think about, man, what are y'all's holidays going to look like? <laughs> like, where are you going to live? You know mm. what I mean? Like, I think we think a lot about how we have to, like, that's a big thing for my, my wife and I is, is how can we build this thing where they really are going to want to be together and, and keep in touch with each other? Yeah. You know, group texting is cool now mm-hmm. because we can always, and I know sometimes my kids, one of them are like, man, I don't, I don't, do I really want to be on this group <laughs> text? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like little things like that are always kind of circling, you know, in your head. Like how can this, how can we keep it tight? Mm-hmm. Wow. Wonderful. So that's it. Mm-hmm. Faith integrity, yeah. sacrifice, leadership, and legacy. All of that rolled up equals yeah. fizzle, and you yeah. live it, and I see you're teaching it to your family. That's yeah. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, Lenore, we gotta wrap up today. I mean, the producer's over here waving at me. <laughs> you know, I just, yeah. I got more questions yeah. for you, Alan, yeah. but I guess we'll have to Come. hold those till next yeah, we'll time. Yeah. People, this is We Build, the official podcast of H.J. Russell. I'm Paul Bryant. Lenoya Murphy. We'll see you next week. We Build, hosted by Paul Bryant at Lanoia Murphy, recorded at Katsukian Studios.